Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship here at the First Baptist Church of Freehold on this midway point in the month of October. We're so glad, thank you, that you decided to join us to make us part of your worship this morning to all of our guests and worshipers. Worshiping with us for the first time, we grant you with an extra special welcome, and we hope and pray that you feel the presence of God in and amongst and throughout this worship service this morning. To all those watching and worshiping with us virtually this morning, we grant you a welcome as well and hope and pray that you have had a blessed and fruitful week. As we enter into this time of worship, centering our hearts to prepare to receive a word from the Lord, let's begin with a choral call to worship. having our hearts and our minds centered by the choir, I invite you to rise as you are able and join together with me in the call to worship this morning. Come, let us walk and rest in the bountiful beauty of green pastures. Come, let us feast at the abundant table of God's grace and God's love. Come, let us dwell in the house of the Lord and worship him forevermore. Let us join together in singing our opening hymn, Give to our God Immortal Praise.
Let us join together in sharing in our unison prayer. Loving Shepherd, you have gathered us into your presence under your divine care. You know us each by name and claim us as your beloved children. When we are hungry, be our bread for the journey. When we thirst, be our wellspring of living water. When we stray away from the safety of your arms, be our compass and our covering. And when we take our rest, may we dwell in your presence forevermore. Amen. Are there any announcements from the congregation this morning? Are there any other announcements from your congregation? I have quite the laundry list as there is much happening here within the life of the church. Again, after our worship service this morning, we'll have our quarterly business meeting. This upcoming Wednesday, we will have our next Zoom Bible study session at 7.30 p.m. We'll be going over chapter four of N.T. Wright's book. So we look forward to that time of conversation and discussion with each other. It would require this upcoming Thursday at 4.30 if you would like to join and sing amongst the angelic voices that stand in the new and improved choir loft. You are invited to join it at 4.30. And immediately following that, as Jen mentioned, the next Bunko game night at 6.30 p.m. Next Sunday is the crop walk. If you would 
there's still time to sponsor walk or donate funds. The sign sheet is in the rear in the sanctuary. We'll be collecting monies through next Sunday and through the end of the month. So please support as you can. Also next Sunday there will be a deacons meeting after worship. And one final announcement in partnership with EHAP and the American Baptist Women here at the church. We'll be having a clothing drive collecting coats, shoes, boots, blankets, and body wipes for those within our community. We ask that they are clean as you donate them to the church. We will be collecting those through the end of the month, so please, in this time of caring for our neighbor, you are invited to bring those here to the church throughout the week or on Sunday. And then, um, as part of our All Saints worship service on November 5th, we'll be reading the names of those that are, have gone on to glory over the past calendar year. If you have not yet given your name to the office or have not informed Arlene, who is, I believe, collecting the names and making sure that everything is good to go for the list, uh, please bring, in the, bring those names in as soon as possible so that we can properly honor the life of the dearly departed. And now it is time for our children's moment this morning. Do you think God can be here in church with us? Probably. Probably. Definitely. I, I would hope so. That's a sermon for another Sunday. <laughs> Do you think God is with you when you're at home with your family? Do you think God is with you whenever you go to school and you're traveling? Do you think God can even be right now at another church as they're worshiping and giving glory? So God, wherever we look, wherever we go, God is there with us, walking right beside us. And that is the image of the Lord is our shepherd, which is our scripture for this morning. And it's our reminder that no matter where we go, no matter what we do, God is right there with us, always protecting us, caring for us, and loving us. So whether in church, whether you're at home, whether you're with your friends, know that God is right there by your side. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you are our ever-present help, that you walk with us every step of the way. Continue to make yourself known and make us aware of your presence wherever we are.
Seeing none, I have two requests that have been shared. Uh, continued prayers for Terry Vanacek for strength and hope as she recovers and recuperates at home. And then an update on Mary Ann. Her surgery was successful. And th many thanks to all the answered prayers. And she's looking to be discharged and return home in the next couple of days, so sometime this week. So continue to keep her in our prayers as she begins this post-surgery recovery. Let us now enter into a time of silent prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, who is with us everywhere we go, everywhere we look, we bask in the radiance of your glory and your grace. We give you thanks for all those that are gathered here as part of this divine encounter with you anew, O oh God. May you bless us, keep us, cover us in your love until we gather again in the fullness of your love. Lord, you have heard the prayers of your people, prayers for those near and dear to our hearts that are recovering, healing, seeking strength and hope in these times of uncertainty. We give thanks for successful procedures. Oh God, we pray that your strength rests upon Marianne in these moments, that as she heals, as she recovers, as she seeks to return home, that you continue to lead her and guide her, keep her under the watchful eyes and in the comfort of your hands. Lord, as we gaze upon our world, a world that is longing to close its borders to those who are seeking safety and shelter. May you challenge us so that we might open the doors just as we have opened our hearts to care for our neighbor, make sure that they have the basic human needs, food, water, love, and care. We pray for a world that is ravaged anew by acts of war, acts of hate, acts of violence. We pray, O oh God, that for those that are working for peace, may we work alongside and join them so that peace might root out of justice and that there might truly be justice for all, both near and far. We mourn and grieve with those who have lost their lives, the lives of their loved ones, entire families that have perished. We pray for the destruction of property, of livelihood, of safety and security. 
We condone those acts, O oh God, and we pray that we might work diligently so that the evils of this world might be eradicated and that out of your love and out of your grace, we might build and cultivate a new world where we can live and coexist in harmony and peace. We pray for a world that is ravaged by hunger, by famine, by those who long for a drip of water. May we build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven so that those who are seeking to simply live may not lack anything. We pray that we might be people of hope, people who carry forth your promise of love into a world who's crying out to hear a word from you. May we be your mouthpiece, O oh God, and may we be your hands and feet and heart in your world. There is much that has gone and spoken from our lips, but you hear it from the depths of our hearts. We pray, O oh God, that you hear our cries and according to your will, may they indeed be done. We pray all of this in the name of the Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer, who taught his disciples this prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the time of offering, I invite the ushers to come forward so that we might give our gifts to the Lord. pray. O oh God, for the abundance of blessings that you have showered us with, we take this time to give you back a portion of that which is already yours. We pray that you use these gifts, multiply so that they, 
your kingdom might be ushered in on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. As we continue in our worship, let us continue in singing and making a joyful noise. As we sing together, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. I invite you to hear these familiar words with me this morning. I have before us the English Standard Version of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of the word. As we come to this time of hearing the preached word, let us pray. O oh God, give us eyes to see anew, ears to hear afresh, a heart to be warmed and a spirit to be transformed, so that we might not leave this place ever the same. Amen. You're probably wondering, what else can be said about the 23rd Psalm? The most well-known, or 151, depending upon your Bible. That is always the challenge that we find when we have a familiar text before us, much less a familiar and beloved text. Many of us can probably recite the King James Version of the 23rd Psalm by heart, easier than we can recite the names of any of our favorite lists. We have found solace and comfort within this psalm because it has never changed for us, even as life has changed us. As we return to this familiar psalm, as we think about it anew this morning, 
I invite you to ponder, what does it mean for you when you hear the words, the Lord is my shepherd? Or rather, how are we to understand ourselves as sheep under the care of that divine shepherd? Now, obviously, in our normal day-to-day -day lives, we don't like to think of ourselves as sheep. But if we're not thinking of ourselves as sheep within this text, then we must be the shepherd. And that position, unfortunately, is currently and eternally occupied. So as we embrace the 23rd Psalm, First, the Lord is our peace. The familiar image that brings comfort to our minds and our hearts. The Lord, our shepherd, our comforter, our caretaker. This opening verse, I imagine countless reflections, meditations, devotionals have called us to imagine the sufficient and bountiful nature of God. And it is in the Lord being our peace that we find our souls restored and refreshed as we are led by the still waters of the riverbank or the Jersey Shore, depending on your preferred water. We frolic in the lush greenery of the pastures. We find ourselves at peace wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, even as the chaos of the world surrounds us and floods our minds. And because God is everywhere, even in church, we find peace in God's presence. We find ourselves, because the Lord is at peace, being able to weather whatever life might set before us. Which leads us into thinking, how does God help us weather the storm? As we think about ourselves as sheep, we recognize that we are prone to wandering here, there, and everywhere in between. We are indeed human, after all, the whole wanting to do things ourselves. We are prone to even finding ourselves sometimes in places where we do not necessarily belong. The familiar words of the fourth verse, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, O God, you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now I imagine that we have heard this verse countless times, but in this season in particular, it feels a little different. We find ourselves taking steps cautiously as we walk around. We are in one shadowy filled valley to say the least. The pandemic hovering around us, lying in wait even still. Just like the ancient thieves that David alludes to in this verse, the shadow of death sits and it waits, hiding behind the bend. And you might be thinking, the coronavirus is just one of many shadows, right? There's all kinds of things that we are dealing with as part of simply living life. And so what are some of the other shadows in the valleys that are waiting for us? Shadows of 
institutional systemic evils that have been passed down through the generations. Shadows that tell us who we are told to like and hate so that we know who is to get our support and who receives our condemnation. Shadows that create unequal housing treatments and sustain food apartheid. Shadows that call the same problem either a crisis or a consequence of their own actions, depending on how they look. Shadows that some of us are able to see and others are oblivious even as they stand right next to the evil. Yet, in the midst of our valleys, the good news, and there is good news within this verse, is that God still finds new ways to protect us. God still finds new ways to combat the shadows, leading and guiding us through the valley. God is aware of the evils around us, yet keeps us safe. Yes, we might get scratched, we might get burned, we might bear the marks of what we have been through. But because the valley is not our final destination, we can trust that God will lead us through it. And as we can trust that the valley is not our final destination, we can be confident that the Lord continues to be our provision. The opening verse of the 23rd Psalm reminds us that in the bountifulness of provision, we should not want for anything. And in the fifth verse, we are prepared in front of us a table in the presence of our enemies. The psalmist draws from his own personal recollection, his own story and relationship with God. As he is reminded, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Even in our abundance, sometimes evil is right in the room. Yet the psalmist reminds us there is something special prepared for the one who God claims and God loves. David is restored and renewed as a result of his great faith and faithfulness as he recalls his story, his head once more anointed, his faith overflowing with abundance. Just like us, our faithfulness can be rewarded and then some with divine provision. And if we are faithful, we will benefit from the fullness of God's immeasurable presence. The promise that closes this chapter with the assurance that we will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. The blessed assurance that we find within these closing words, perhaps why this psalm is so often read as we celebrate the lives of loved ones who have gone on to glory. Knowing that the shepherd's care does not end when our life's journey is completed, but continues throughout time eternal, alongside the great clouds of witnesses, forever in community and communion with the Divine Shepherd. Friends, we know the 23rd Psalm backwards and forwards, upside down, inside out. We are reminded of these words at any moment of the day. 
Perhaps some of you have images of the shepherd in your homes. A reminder of God's ever presence. What does it mean that the Lord is our shepherd? In this season, it means that we must place our trust in God no matter the circumstance or situation which lies before us. We must trust that the same God, when we are laying by the still waters, when life is sunshine and daisies, is going to be there when we are trying to tough our way through the darkest of valleys and the fiercest of thunderstorms. We must trust that we are in the care of the shepherd who has what is best for us, not just in this season, but in every season, in every day. We must trust and believe that with the helpful guide of the shepherd's staff, sometimes nudging us a little harder than other days, that we are marching by grace, by love, by goodness, and by mercy towards that place of safety called Zion. No matter the work that we have been called to do, God is with us now the same way as before and the same way moving forward. The Lord is our shepherd, friends, and we can trust and be confident of that. And so as I take my seat, let us hear these familiar words of the psalm once more in the version in which many of us, I believe, first heard it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. May we rise and join together in singing our closing hymn, My Shepherd Will Supply My Need.
May we join together in the words of our benediction this morning. We go forth in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our divine shepherd, and in the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, which rests and abides with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.